All right, so we're going to talk about tagging today. So the idea is that uh, sentences have parts of speech. Speech has parts, chunks that are grouped together, right? So words are traditionally grouped in parts of speech. So knowing the part of speech tag of a word tells us something about the context of that word. For example, uh, if I have the word spelled C-O-N-T-E-N-T, as an adjective, I know that it's pronounced content, right? But if it's a noun, it's content, the content of that book, right? So, for example, in this case, the part of speech, whether it's an adjective or a noun, tells us what do I mean by the word, right? Uh, I love Lucy can mean that you love Lucy, right? But I love Lucy can also be a whole the whole thing can be a noun right and it can be a TV series uh, for example saw and saw as noun and verb right so well, a saw to used to cut trees versus I saw something uh, is the past tense of the verb to see right so these are uh, part of speech tags are very useful for many many tasks in natural language processing now, what does, uh, we're going to look at methods using um, probabilistic techniques to infer the part of speech of a certain word. And like all methods, it needs to be trained. So when you look at training data, for example, right, you see something that looks like this. Book verb, that determiner, flight noun, right, something like that. Well, so. We will train with that, and the goal, right? The goal of the of the whole thing is that if the input is a sentence without tags, the output will be a sentence with the tags uh, added to it. That's what we want. There are many ta types of tagging. So, for example, you can have uh, named entity recognition. So you tag only entities. So, for example, this is the input. Profit sort Boeing Company, easily topping forecast of Wall Street as their CEO, Alan Mulally, announced first quarter results. And the output can be something like profit sort ad, and then we want to know that Boeing uh, CO is a company. We want to know that Wall Street is a location. Uh, and we want to know that, for example, Alan Mulally at the time is a person, right? So this is another kind of tagging. So, but for any kind of tagging, right, the process that we're going to use um, to infer the tagging is going to be the same. So, the training set, right, so it basically looks like this, like a bunch of sentences with their tags next to them. Now, what's the task? Well, the task is we have multiple training examples we're going to we're going to call them x, y for the sentence and y, y for the, for the uh, labels, right? So we have training examples with a bunch of words and a label for each one of those words, right? The task is to learn a function or ha create a program, right? That when given a bunch of words can give you a sequence of tags for that sequence of words, right? Corresponding to that. So. What we're going to use is something called generative models, right? So what are generative models? Well, let's say I want to write a thank you note to someone special who gave me a watch. And I know I want to put a verb, a pronoun, a preposition, um, a determiner, and a noun. I know that this is one, what I want to <clears throat> this is what I want to put. So for example, an example of this is thank you for the gift, right? Verb pronoun, preposition, determiner, noun. So I can put a thank you for the gift, right? Or I can generate another, based on these tags, I can generate another set of words. Love you for the watch, or thank you for the watch, right? These are all, the, they all conform to this pattern that I want to generate. That's the generative model. Is I start from a top-down process where I think, okay, this is kind of like the pattern that I want to write in, and then I generate the sentence from that pattern, picking words in these categories, right? And I, out of all these that I'm going to pick, I'm going to look at which one 
in, and consciously, which one has the best probability of being good, of being nice, of being acceptable, okay? So uh, it's a supervised learning problem. That's how I'm going to treat it, right? And we will have, like we said, training examples, words and tags, right? Uh, a sequence of words with its corresponding sequence of tags. That's what we're going to be, that's what we're going to use of training. The task will be to learn the function that maps uh, those sequences of words to a sequences of tags, right? And what we're going to do is we're going to try to learn a distribution probability for those tags given those words from these training examples. So for any test input, x, where x is a, se a, set, of a set of words, right? We're going to have some computer program, some function, that is going to look at all possible tag combinations for these uh, sequence of words, and it's going to give us the tag combination that maximizes this probability. That's what the argmax means, right? It means not give me the number that's the biggest, but give me the object here, here and here, right? Give me the object that resulted in the maximization of this probability. So basically give me the most likely sequence of tags. So in, 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 other, in other words, right? So we're going to learn the distribution of distribution probability of that sequence of words with a given sequence of tags from the training examples. And we, we, will, we know that uh, the probability of the tags, uh, the tags and the words is basically the probability of the tags times the probability of the words given the tags, for example. We know this from probability math that we've covered in other videos. So then with that, we can have the following. This, this can also be, um, be written instead of P of X, wherever you see X, change it to Y, wherever you see Y, change it to X is the same. So with that equality, we end up having uh, what is called the Bayesian rule, right? So the probability of the tags, of a sequence of tags, given a sequence of words, is the probability that the that you see these words given that tag times the probability of that sequence of tags times the probability of that sequence of words, okay? And the probability of the sequence of words is just going to be this formula here, right? The probability of that sequence of words given the probability of a sequence of tags for all possible sequence of tags times the probability of a sequence of tags, right? So you add them all together. Now, this sounds super complicated, but it's not so, it's not so complicated. Uh, because we want to maximize, we want the maximum probability of the sequence of tags given the sequence of words, and if we replace that with the formula that we just uh, uh, alluded to, we have the probability of the sequence of words given the tags times the probability of the sequence of tags divided by the probability of x. Now, here in the denominator, y is not a factor, so we can treat this as a constant. So if I want to maximize this whole term, right, really what I'm looking to maximize is the numerator of this fraction, because if the denominator is constant, well, the bigger numerator, the bigger the numerator, the bigger the fraction. So everything that I said about the probability of x, that summation that you saw in the previous slide, is not really relevant for this, because we don't need it. We just need to maximize the upper portion of this, the, the numerator of this fraction, right? So whatever sequence of tags maximizes this probability, that's the sequence of tags that I'm going to assign to this sequence of words, okay? So in order to do that, we're going to look at a, at a process called uh, hidden Markov models. What hidden Markov models say is that giving a set of observations, these are observations, a mark of change of chain of states, so something that you can't see but you know it's happening, right? We're going to say that there's a transition probability, probability of xi given xi minus 1, so the probability that this state 0 becomes state 1, right? That's the probability of x1 given x0. Now, the probability of x2 given x1, 
this assumes, this Markov model assumes that every state depends only on its previous state and that these observations, O1, O2, O3, depend on the actual state, okay? So uh, a good example of this is say if you have a dog, right? Your observations are whether the dog is wagging the tail or not. And the states are whether the dog is happy, hungry, or angry, for example, right? So the states are something you cannot see. The observations are the things you can see. And what you observe depends on the state. The, the dog is going to wag the tail based on the state. Now, the state depends on the previous state. So, for example, if the dog was hungry here, the dog might be angry in the next state because it was hungry before and it's been an hour, right? Now, we're going to call the probability of going from one state to another a transition probability and the probability of seeing an observation given a state an emission probability, okay? And what we're going to say is the probability of n states having seen n observations is the probability of the first state times the probability of the second given the first times the probability of the observation. <coughs> If you see this, for example, these two probabilities, it's basically the probability of this state times the probability of this emission. And you multiply that by the probability of the second state, given the first, times the probability of the emission, given that state, and so on and so forth <coughs> until you go to the last state. Now this <coughs> looks uncannily similar to what we saw with the probabilities of a sequence of words comma probability of a sequence of tags and that's exactly how we're going to use it in the next video.